welcome to Online Advantage. I'm Professor Gonzalez. Today we're going to continue the discussion on the classified balance sheet. Last time you learned about the categories of the classified balance sheet and today we're going to actually uh, do an example of a balance sheet. So I wanted you to understand the importance of the classified balance sheet. Remember that our financial reports are for users. So the users that we focus on are the investors and creditors. And being able to see what assets, for example, are current, their most liquid assets, that can be converted to cash to pay off short-term debt is very important, especially to creditors. So let's get started. So you have a list of accounts. It's actually a trial balance. Remember, the trial balance is an order. It has assets, liabilities, and equity. The balance sheet, just like all of our financial statements, have a header, the name of the company, the name of the financial statement, and the date. For the balance sheet, it's for a point in time. So it is just the date. We start with assets. And the first category we're gonna put down are the current assets. So I'm putting a header for current assets. The, uh, we put this usually in the order of liquidity and liquidity is how fast something can convert to cash. So the most liquid asset of course is, is cash. So cash is listed first. So our cash is $101,000. Then the next asset we list is accounts receivable for $157,000. Below accounts receivable is its contra account, and that is allowance for doubtful accounts, sometimes called allowance for bad debts. And it's gonna be listed right under the parent, which is accounts receivable. I'm just gonna call it allowance for right now, but it is allowance for bad debt. Now this is a contra account, so it has a normal credit balance, so we put it on the balance sheet as a negative number. That doesn't mean that it's actually a negative balance, that just means it's with all of its friends that have debit balances and it has a credit balance. So we're gonna put it down as negative using parentheses. The next one we're gonna list is interest receivable. And that is for 29,000. Then we have a prepaid expense, that prepaid expense is for next year, covering next year. So it is a current asset for 33000 The next one is inventory for 332000 Inventory is oftentimes one of the largest current assets on the balance sheet. And then short-term investments. The word short term kind of signifies that it is short term within the year. And that is for 216,000. So that is our last of the current assets. And now we're gonna total that up. So total current assets. We total that up and I'm just gonna put it off here to the side. Don't be confused with these columns. It's just a formatting issue, just to make it look nicer. So I'm gonna put it off to the side. So the total current assets is 843,000. Now we're gonna move on to the next category. Now we're gonna go through the long-term investment. So looking at the list, uh, the first long-term investment we have is deferred charges. And that is for 75,000. The deferred, deferred charge is just a long-term prepaid. The uh, next one is restricted cash. Whenever cash has been restricted for anything that is for long-term, say it's restricted to pay long-term debt, then it needs to be categorized as a long-term investment. So our restricted cash is 150,000. Then we have long-term investments. A lot of times those are bonds that we purchased from, from other companies that uh, mature longer than a year, but 52,000. And that's the last of our long-term investments. So we're gonna total that up and put that off to the side. And that's 277,000. So we've done two categories, current assets and long-term investments. The third category is plant assets or property plant and equipment. So I'm gonna abbreviate that P, P, and E for property, plant, and equipment. Uh, the first one we're gonna list is land, and that is for 297,000. So this would be land that's going to be used for operating the company. Probably the land underneath the buildings that we're gonna list next, buildings. Land is always separated because it's a non-depreciable asset. So our buildings is 2,169,000. And then we have equipment for 654,000. The next account is the accumulated depreciation. That's a contra asset. So it is gonna go with the building and the equipment. I'm gonna abbreviate that A slash D for accumulated depreciation. And that amount is 864,000. I'm gonna put that down as a negative, just like we did with the allowance on the current assets, because 
it is, has a uh, normal credit balance when the other accounts have a normal debit balance. So then I'm gonna total this up and I'm gonna have my total property, plant, and equipment. And that amount is 2,256,000. Okay, the next category is intangible assets. The intangibles are patents and franchises. The patents is 169,000 and the franchise is a 57,000. We total that up to get 226,000. We have now finished the assets. So we're going to do total assets. And that'd be totaling up this whole column that we had, which was the total current assets, the total long-term investments, the total property, plant, and equipment, and the total intangibles. And that comes to 3,602,000. Okay, now we're gonna go over the liabilities. I'm gonna put up the header for liabilities, and then I'm gonna put a header for current liabilities. Remember, there are just two categories for liabilities, current liabilities and long-term liabilities. So the current liabilities are liabilities we expect to pay within one year. First one, accounts payable for 206,000. Dividends payable for 27,000. Interest payable for 33,000. Income tax payable for 57,000 and deferred revenue. Deferred revenue is just another term for unearned revenue, which you may have heard in other classes, for 77,000. Uh, the last current liability we have is the current portion of long-term debt. Whenever we look at long-term debt, maybe it's for five years, the portion that is actually due in the next 12 months from the accounting period is considered current. So it has to be split out as current portion of the long-term debt. And that is for 30,000. We'll now total the current liabilities, and that comes to 430,000. The last category for liabilities is the long-term liabilities. So I'll put a header for long-term liabilities, and we just have two of them. We have long-term notes payable, and that is for 304,000, and bonds payable. The more and more you study accounting, the more you'll be able to recognize when account is long-term or current. So bonds payable is for 500,000. And then we total that. And our total is 804,000. Okay, now we are going to add the equity. Our equity is common stock and retained earnings. Those are both equity accounts. Common stock is 1,950,000. And our retained earnings is 418,000. The last thing we are going to do is we are going to total up our equity and it is 2,368,000. And the very last part is to do total liabilities and equity. So we take all the liabilities that we totaled up already, the current liabilities and long-term liabilities, and we add that to the total stockholders equity. And we get total liabilities and equity. That amount is 3,602,000. And it matches the total assets because that represents the fundamental account equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. Thank you very much for joining me today. Please click on the Advantage logo to subscribe. I hope to see you in another video.